introduce myself. I am Muhammad Bahru, the Master of Ceremony. I'm delighted to welcome you all to this virtual meeting, International Public Lecture Online Security Issues and Privacy in Indonesian Digital. Honorable Dean of the Faculty of Law, University of Jember, Associate Professor Dr. Baju Dwi Anggono, and our speaker, Fiona Swana, PhD, from the University of South Australia, and our moderator, Ikiti Widiana Swada, from the University of Jember. Also, all the participants in this virtual public lecture. This webinar, or international public lecture, is expected to provide a great opportunity for the participants to discuss and share the recent theoretical knowledge, the latest discussion and experience in dealing with the online security issues and privacy in the age of digital life, particularly in Indonesian context. And before we start this meeting, let us honor this event with Indonesia's national anthem, Indonesia Raya. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to the welcoming remarks to opening the speech that will be delivered by Dean of the University of Chamber Faculty of Law. Then also we would like to request the Dean to open this international public lecture officially. Please welcome to Mr. Jin. Thank you, Brother Ulum. My voice is sound clear. Hello, yes, Madalu. very clear. Yes, okay. very clear. Okay. How are you? Thank you. The Excellencies, Head of the Criminal Law Department, Faculty of Law, University of Jember, Iked David Yana Suwarda, PhD, as well as the moderator, Fiona Suara, PhD, lecturer and researcher at the University of South Australia, as the speaker, fellow lecturer and of, at the Faculty of Law, University of Jember, all committees and participants of the international public lecture. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. It is truly salam. to meet you in this international public lecture with the topic Legal Issue in Social Media, a case study of Indonesia, organized by the Faculty of Law, University of Jember. As dissemination of information to continuously improve the excellence of learning at the Faculty of Law, University of Jember, as well as to enhance the quality of graduates, the international public lecture like this will be regularly held. I would, I would like to thank Tupak Gede Widiana Swada, PhD, 
and the committee who prepare this event. The internet is now a necessity for society, from communication, shopping, to loan application, they all have been done online. Unfortunately, the rapid use of the internet has not been balanced with digital legal literacy in society. As a result, legal problem or dispute related to social media arise from the spread of fake news or hoax, leakage of personal data brought to pornography. Hoax is often found on various social media with various issues, including those related to the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> the Ministry of Communication and Information, Cominfo, notes that since the beginning of the, of the pandemic until August uh, 2020, 1,028 hoax have been spread on various social media platform related to this disinformation about COVID-19 virus. Besides, there are problems with privacy data protection. Even data of one of the largest social media company in the world, Facebook, have been stolen by other parties. Currently, the House of Representatives is discussing the draft law on personal data protection, for which public need to review its substance. Fraud through social media is also rife. National Consumer Protection Agency, BPKN, note a significant increase in consumer violation at the beginning of uh, 2020, where there were 582 complaints and 70 of them were about e-commerce. By this fact, the international public lecture this morning become interesting, as it does not only discuss Indonesia, but also compare the other country. I would like to say many thanks to Fiona Suara PhD and the moderator, Mr. Gede PhD. Finally, by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I officially open the international public lecture. Thank you to the committee and the participant. Happy discussion. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Waalaikumsalam. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dean, for the speech and opening this event. And then we turn to the next agenda. I think it is the most important agenda that will consist of discussion. And prior to discussion, uh, uh, the speaker will pro, uh, deliver the presentation. Then I will forward this event to handle to Associate Professor Dr. Igedewit Yonaswada. Thank you to Dahrul Ulum as the Master of Ceremony for this event. First of all, I would like to say thank you to the Excellency, my Dean, Bapak Dr. Bayu Dwi Anggono for the welcoming speech and for the opening of this event. As my Dean said that this event is the annual event actually, but I would like to discuss with my Dean as well because this is very important for us. It's not just an annual event. Maybe we will conduct the event like this regularly, maybe three to four, four maybe three, four, five months uh, every, every semester. Yes, if we can make it every semester, it will be very good for us, for the University of Jember, especially Faculty of Law. Secondly, I would like to thank Dr. Fiona Suana, which is the speaker for this international public lecture. Dr. Fiona, I can say that this is the first international public lecture held by the Faculty of Law. As I said, that hopefully we can make event like this regularly, maybe every semester. And for this first international public lecture, you are the first guest for the event. So this is very special for us. And 
Again, thank you very much for accepting our invitation to be the speaker of this international public lecture held by the Faculty of Law, University of Chamber. And then I would like to greet as well all the participants. I think mostly the participants are uh, students of Law Faculty, University of Chamber from graduate, maybe some of them are postgraduate students. I welcome you to this international public lecture. And then I would like to share the curriculum vitae of our speaker today. Excuse me, I will I will like to share. Just wait for a second. Okay, uh, I received this curriculum vitae for Fiona, it's so length. I think, uh, you know, Dr. Fiona is very talented scholars and also smart and intelligent scholars. I have been met him uh, with her in Australia and have a long collaboration with Dr. Fiona as well when I was a student at QUT and Fiona as well, a student at QUT. She is a very nice and intelligent scholar. So as you can see, the curriculum vitae of Dr. Fiona Suwana, currently he is a researcher and also a lecturer at School of Creative University of South Australia. And she also an online tutor at University of South Australia from, from Adelaide, Australia, and also research associate at Flinder Uni University, Australia. As you also can see here from the summary of Dr. F uh, Fiona curriculum vitae, she is a course designer for 2021 Australian DFAT short course with QUT on democratic resilience, youth participation in Indonesia's democracy. She is also sessional academic at University of South Australia and research associate at Flinders University. She has become course designer and co-course leader for short course program of democratic resilience, digital and media literacy at Queensland, QT philosophy at Digital Media Research Center, School of Communication, Creative Industries Faculty, QUT, Australia. She also received Master of Science of Communication Science from Universitas Indonesia and Bachelor of Arts, Hunters, of Communication Studies from London, London School of Public Relations, Jakarta. Her research focuses on digital activism, digital media, digital media literacy, social and political movement, and democracy and young people, specifically for civic engagement and political participation that can support democratic practices. And the most important thing, and, and I would like to say to all of you that she published many, many work in article and book chapter as well. So inspiring us and as an academic as well. So as you can see here, her work has been published in information, communication and society, social and behavior, Behavioral Sciences, Kassetsat Journal of Social Science and Research Report as well, a commission independent study into digital news in Australia for Facebook Australia and company submission to the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, Digital Platform Inquiry. So I cannot read all of the curriculum vitae of the speaker. I just want to say that again, she is a very talented scholar and intelligent scholar, and also inspiring me myself 
because Fiona publishes so many work in journal and, and book chapters. I hope I can work with you collaboratively in the future. And today we will discuss an interesting topic with Dr. Fiona entitled Online Security Issues and Privacy in Indonesian Digital. Without further ado, I would like to please Fiona to start the presentation and then we'll be followed by the Q&A session, maybe only for about 30 minutes. Fiona, if you need more, we can give you more time because the speaker today is only you. So maybe 35 or 40 minutes is okay for Dr. Fiona. Dr. Fiona, floor is yours, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and I would like to say my remarks for uh, Bapak Dr. Bayu Dwi Anggono. Thank you so much, and also Bapak Dr. Igede Widiana Suwarda. And thank you so much for inter introducing me and welcoming me with a, a good uh, introduction. And I'm so happy today that I can share for uh, this uh, international public lecture, and I would like to share about online security issue and privacy in Indonesian digital. I think. Uh, this topic is quite attached with part of my PhD research before, and I still continue until now, because when we talk about digital, we also need to uh, touch best uh, many area actually during about this uh, topic. And we can next. Yeah, and when, uh, preview slide. Yeah, when we talk about uh, digital transformation, Actually, we're gonna talk about the rapid progress of digitalization, uh, digitalization uh, that can transform society. And it's very interesting when we talk about digitalization, actually, it also affect many uh, area, like I already mentioned before, it could be from critical infrastructure, defense system, political and social structure, communication uh, tools also been uh, operating increasingly through this kind of digital or internet. And we also need to understand actually the formation of the political and social issue is taking place growingly or increasingly in online spaces. And actually it also can shape, it also can affect the public discourses. Next. And when we talk actually about the legitimation and and the exercise of political power are digitally determined, there are consequently, and this consequently also create another possibility to some certain group, to some certain organization or institution, or even though you're individual that can exploit the content, algorithms, and also institutional accountability. And as we can see, actually there is a significant challenges currently rise not only in Indonesia, I think it also become global phenomena, which is like disinformation or misinformation. And also we have issue with hacking attempts. That's why when we talk about this kind of situation, we also need to understand like the resilience of our democratic practices and also institution against this kind of issue is become vital. I also put this kind of article from Freedom House, and actually this is a really good article, probably uh, I already put the, the title, it's easy to Google it, and actually um, they already talked since last year, since 2019, actually democracy is in retreat. And actually it's not happening in only, like I said, it's not only in Indonesia, but several countries around the world, it also have this kind of problem. Uh, next. So that's why I, I always uh, have this kind of question and how actually to make use our digital data and digital culture to advance insight around digital environment because nowadays we're just living in digital environment in this kind of digital era. I found actually this is really interesting uh, argument from uh, Professor Terry Fu and actually uh, he mentioned about trust. Yes, when we talk about this kind of digital data and culture, we also need to consider their presence of policy covering trust, cybersecurity, consumer protection, and this is so vital in the future of our digital environment. And that's why uh, he argued there are three elements, which is accountability, clarity, 
and comprehensibility, and also the last one, regulation or governance. Because these three elements are very useful actually to support and to maintain the proportional of policy development or to maintain the safety internet in online information. Okay, now when we go back to about digital Indonesia, we should uh, think actually, we should remember, we still have some concern. I wrote this article as like few few years ago, actually, I wrote this article when I did my PhD, actually, my PhD research about uh, how Indonesian young people use digital media to support political participation. And I found actually in my research, there are similar or problem or dissimilar finding actually for my uh, participant, actually, they mentioned the Indonesian activists or even though the Indonesian higher degree student like young people, they a bit worry when they participate in social and political uh, concern with digital media because they say this ITE law or this cyber law in Indonesia can uh, put them in the jail or custody if they share something related about political or if they share critically about the political. So basically when we see there is still concern, we still have uh, some problem with our uh, cyber law itself. Uh, next. And then, uh, like I mentioned, uh, it's quite far. I wrote about that in 2016. And sadly, if I also found it in this year, actually, we still have this kind of struggling because like, there is one good article by Hari Hermawan. And in this article, they also mentioned we still need to fight for our freedom. We still have this kind of issue with this kind of law. Even though there is data from SafeNet uh, as a digital right and freedom watchdog, that uh, more and more people have been charged under this kind of law. And now actually there are 3,000 cases has got uh, regarding about this uh, law. So, he also argue and he also mentioned actually this figure can be expected to increase in this year in this 2020 that national police is patrolling the internet to accuse of spreading hoaxes and has speech about the coronavirus so actually when i did my research in 2014 and in 2016 i wrote this article in 2018 i also published uh, related about my uh, research and now 2020 is still there like this IT law is still create any other issue and actually is still spread fear in democracy next another also concern that we need to consider when we talk about this kind of internet is also about Indonesia internet freedom like uh, this are another article actually it's really an article that can be uh, read more and probably also give us another insight about Indonesian internet situation now because there is another situation because many restrictions happening now with this kind of uh, Indonesian digital environment and through the Freedom House again, actually Indonesia is already declined as a score rank. So from 454, it become 51. And one of them actually because obstacle to access, limitation on the content, and also violation on user right. And if you read this kind of report, actually it's really interesting because we talk more about the how uh, previous slide. <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, they still they talk about the about the digital environment in Indonesia is not really getting getting probably. Uh, free, but actually is getting get a restriction. That's why our rank is getting getting a uh, decline. Next. So what's next? That's why like I have previous question. I also think further like how the presence of policy covering trust, cybersecurity and consumer protection, which is that vital for our future digital environment. And one thing for sure, definitely we need like multi-stakeholder collaboration and comprehensive regulation for governing digital Indonesia. But before I talk about that, I would like to give some insight from Australia because I've been living here uh, almost now, uh, next, next few months, it will be seven years for me. So I 
I, fi I did and I finished my PhD in here and I continue working and did several research about Australia. So I would like to give insight about Australia. Next. Okay, when I share about Australia, this is not something that I said which on better or which is not good. No, this is something that we can learn together. And probably in the future, actually, Indonesia and Australia can have more collaboration, right? So in Australia, actually, when we talk about uh, digital era or digital environment, they also consider, oh, actually, uh, we need to think further about this kind of digital environment. We need to, how I can say, it, we need to protect, we need to promote our human rights in here. So they try to create this, so they try to uh, have discussion paper. They try to find how the implication of digital technology for our human rights. And this kind of paper, they try to have uh, like recommendation, how to protect and to promote that human rights itself. So basically this report actually is really good because it's also, uh, involve several multi-stakeholder because they got um, insight not only from the government, but of course from professional, from academic, even though from civil society organization, because they want to know uh, how our uh, technology in the future can affect our human rights. And next, and they found several important area. Actually in the future, when we see this kind of digital environment or we can see this kind of digitalization, actually the future of work in Australia gonna have impact, especially with the automation. Because nowadays, everything is become automatic. Even though like this kind of pandemic COVID-19, actually it also affect us to working from home, to like in Australia, if we need to pay anything now, just everything by online, even though if you want to buy something, you just pay by online. And like, if you want to go to doctor, even though if you want to book, uh, what else, a uh, test or ransom, something like that, you just need to do it by online nowadays. It's not, uh, uh, you can't just, how can I say, it? everything is easily, everything is automatic because everything they put it in their website. Uh, uh, previous a uh, previous slide and then there still have the impact of connectivity of course access and connectivity I think is not only in Indonesia but in Australia even though in some certain part they still try to build this kind of uh, cable this kind of national broadband network for some certain rural area they still have this impact right for some certain rural people probably they still cannot access because they don't have the national broadband network but the government uh, still has this commitment to actually have all area, all people in Australia can get access. Yes, we also uh, need to concern about digital inclusion because like I mentioned, connected or access is also related about inclusion because when we have this kind of digital technology, everybody has the right to use this kind of technology, right? Everyone has the right to use this kind of digital media. So digital not could be exclusive, but definitely it should be inclusive. That's why digital inclusion is so important, they say. Another uh, finding, they also say that this technology facilitated also need to consider about gender-based violence and harassment. And this kind of harassment also can, uh, how I can say it, it can be growing nowadays in head in online because like we already probably got a sense online has speech is become growing so it's also another important area they need to think further and nevertheless we also need to consider about social media content regulation they said and this is also very important because like social media like when i did my phd actually so different what now young people use because the trend how i can say the habit is keep changing is so fast and of course the regulation sometimes to government is also need to be updated it's need to be how can I say it? it's need to be feasible and it need to be um uh suitable to govern this kind of situation and also they have issue about human center about the implication of artificial intelligence and last one of course digital literacy education is so important when we talk about this kind of the future of digital this is actually another independent organization or independent agency in australia that i would like to share and this is actually really good like when i mentioned when uh, 
my finding when we talk about the activists or civil society when they scared to talk and when they uh, scare probably to share what they have as an opinion through online. In Australia, they already think about that. That's why they have a safety commissioner. This is independent agency. They try to become an independent regulator for online safety. So if safety at the beginning, they also started to coordinate they started to have coordination with any other department, especially government department, authority and agency, how they actually keep engaging, keep promoting the online safety across Australia. And I think the good thing from this agency not only have this kind of coordination and collaboration, but they try also to give like, uh, free learning so they always have several content how actually we can use uh, our internet activity is more safety and like they're really concerned about cyberbullying they're also concerned about scams they're also concerned about online hate speech something like that so it's really good and actually they really updated like Two years ago when I started to look this kind of website and I started to learn about this uh, agency, actually, they only put related about at that time, I remember they put about Instagram, but this year they already put TikTok. Why TikTok? Because now TikTok is getting popular in Australia. So they also want to give some insight. When you use TikTok, they usually give you some, uh, how I can say it, like uh, terms and agreement on TikTok, which is sometimes when we use social media, when we join, when we have profile, we didn't uh, read carefully the point, all the point of the regulation or the policy or what I call like the terms of condition when we join this kind of social media. So actually this is really good to promote to the society how we can use our uh, internet in, in the safety way. Next. Also, this is another, uh, they also create several, not several, I think quite uh, gradually, they created several uh, research in this year. And this is actually more to several issue that probably also getting, uh, getting more and more, uh, getting more concerned, like there is a COVID-19 impact in Australian adult online activities and attitude. And they also have adult negative online experiences. And like I said before, online hate speech. So they basically have this kind of research and actually it can uh, download freely. So feel free if you want to read more, this is something a good uh, evidence or a good robust research about um, situation related about online, which is about online safety. Next. And they also uh, try to promote if safety, like I mentioned before. So they always uh, create a safer internet day every year. And they try to promote this uh, even not only national, but try to make it international. Because I think it's so important when you can have safety uh, or we, you can have a good environment online. So definitely you can participate, you can engage more because when you feel safety, when you feel comfortable, definitely you can do more, right? But if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't feel safe, or even though you feel scared, definitely you will not, uh, participate so actually this is really good idea so they already try to promote they also try to have research and they publish everything for free for the for the society but also they try to give the safer internet day as a day that we can remember actually is it really good to have an online safety next and when I also try to observe in our university in Australia, actually is also uh, consider about this kind of situation. Uh, I'm, I'm so grateful. I have several opportunity to work with different university and actually it also helped me to observe and to analyze what their uh, situation related about their online safety. And actually every university is really concerned about the situation, even though like, um, when I did some project with the University of Sydney, it's very interesting when I actually only get some contract for my project. And actually I'm totally like third party stakeholder. I mean, I'm not really part of this kind of uh, community because I only hire for 
join for several months for this kind of research. But uh, I need to, I need to, uh, how I can say it? I need to finish my training about cybersecurity. Otherwise I couldn't get any payment. So actually it's very, very, how I can say it? It's very crucial and very vital for them. So one, you already be part, even though you're outsider, even though you only like your another stakeholder from that organization, you still need to understand about cybersecurity, about this kind of online, how you actually, several questions, something related about how actually you distribute your online data, how you actually talk about the organization. So actually it's kind of learning and also protection as everybody in this community need to have this kind of cybersecurity, right? So actually it's really good idea how they try to imply this kind of, uh, knowledge or this kind of information, but they also have this kind of, uh, how I can say it, it's really good condition. Like if you don't uh, uh, finish or pass this kind of training, you can't get any payment. <laughs> so something like that, but any other university is getting popular. Like at QT, they also always promote this kind of cybersecurity to their student and stuff. And now when I already live in Adelaide and I'm, uh, work in University of South Australia is quite similar because we always have this kind of idea. We always need to protect our community, our student, our staff. So everyone need to have online safety and they really need to understand about cybersecurity. Next. Also, when we talk about uh, information, Australia also created one uh, independent agency and this is related about the information commissioner. And this office is very interesting because actually when we talk about information, about personal information, Australia already have the Privacy Act since 1988, but now during this 20th, they also try to think further now is the era of digital. Information can be easily transferred, can be easily distributed. So that's why they have this kind of new uh, how can I say this new agency as this office actually or this agency try to have a primary function which is the first one privacy function the second one freedom of information function and the last one government information policy function so basically these three roles actually really help department government and also the society itself or the citizen itself, how actually they can have their privacy and actually how they can have their freedom if they want to share the information. And the last one, how actually the government maintain the information policy. They also have their corporate plan last year, for the last year until this year. And actually I really like when they have four strategic, at the beginning they already said, advance online privacy. That's why like I said now, uh, the era is digital, the era is online. That's why they need to, they said we need to have privacy protection for uh, online community. Second, they also want to have influence and uphold privacy and information access as a framework because definitely privacy is, is so important. Information framework is so important. And the fourth one, they say also proactive release about government health information. So basically in this kind of information uh, commission, they also support all the government to proactive to release information. But in this way, they also give probably this kind of guidance, this kind of template, how actually you create a good information that can be accepted and received by the citizen, right? And last one, don't forget also about the regulation itself, the regulation about the information, the regulation about uh, online information and also freedom of expression. Next. And it's quite similar like e-safety, that's why I really like how actually Australia uh, has this kind of agency. They also have a gradually research every year and this is something that they try to do. They also try to think further like I already mentioned about online and now actually data or our information, everything is online, right? So they also try to create a robust research and evidence base again. Now they're thinking about data breaches report because like data we can easily how can I say it? we can easily share like i mentioned if you pay something book something you put your data right you put your mobile phone number you put your address and sometimes you also put your probably uh 
office address. And actually, this is our data, our personal data. So that's why Australia are really concerned about the situation. They always create this kind of uh, research gradually now. They think about what is the notifiable data breaches report during January and June. And they found it actually the, the highest cases actually in from health service provider. Yes. And this health service provider is very relevant because it's, it's more related about COVID-19 situation is so peak during that change during around Australia is quite big around March until June. So that's why, of course, uh, that, that breach is probably around health service provider is getting high. Second is also about finance. Everything, like I say, we pay everything by online. We buy everything now usually easy by online. So that's why finance is also getting affected. Education. Yeah, it's so interesting, right? That the breaches report is also happening now in education. Like, it's quite... Um, logical or it's quite feasible why because now everybody do everything online like in here i still uh, teach for several subjects through online because they really recommended that we can run our courses through online something like that insurance is also any other issue related about data breaches and the last one of course is about legal uh, legal accounting and management so basically this report is actually really good to give us insight as an Australian and to give us a uh, idea, oh, this type of uh, sector actually got still got issue about data breaches. And I really hope probably in Indonesia, some organization or probably independent agency also can create this kind of uh, report because it really can help uh, Indonesian society. Oh, which part actually, or which sector actually still kind of vulnerable to get data breaching? Because to be honest, Indonesia still doesn't have online data protection. Next. So that's why what's next? Definitely one thing for sure, we need to have multi-stakeholder collaboration for helping government to govern this kind of Indonesian digital. And it could be not only from government, but also academic, civil society, industry, journalism, even the library, policy in here, digital platform or digital uh, platform company itself, school, uh, they also need to collaborate each other. One thing for sure, they really need to consider what type or what a comprehensive on a regulation that we need to have. And also cyber law enforcement officer is also very important in Indonesia because this is like really new, how I can say it, like really new era, right? When we talk online, yeah, probably we have this kind of online from 10 or 15 years ago, but actually when we talk about the law enforcement, it's not that easy because this is another different uh, uh, platform, right? So definitely we also need to have a good cyber law enforcement uh, officer. Otherwise we can't have uh, assess, we can't have a fair balance assessment regarding about online cases, right? And one thing for sure, we need to have a good community system to maintain, to support Indonesian digital ecosystem, health and safety. Like I give several examples from Australia, which is they have independent agency. They also have a uh, collaboration with government, with industry, and also university itself already started how actually to maintain this kind of uh, internet healthy and safety. They try to promote cybersecurity. They try to pro promote about uh, privacy or online head speech because they don't want to have any issue in the future. They don't want people can get problem or can get uh, data bridging or probably can get cases, something like that. So actually they already try to promote and I really hope Indonesia also can create this good community and to keep promote this kind of online safety. Next. Uh, I think this is actually my last slide. So basically in 2000, uh, I think in 2018, I wrote about Indonesian really needs about personal data protection because uh, I found Indonesia, we really, we actually have a big population. We, one of the biggest online user in the world and actually, but we don't really have regulation or we don't really have uh, how can I say policy that can protect or to govern this kind of issue because actually as a citizen we need to get protection right so that's why uh, Indonesian civil society definitely need to have further understanding about online regulation 
online data protection and also need to understand about how actually they can develop uh, to probably to understand about the online situation itself and also they need to keep continue to have this kind of digital media literacy because actually when we use this kind of media is actually another uh, different um, of course they have different habits different culture and also different terms and condition but i still have hope when i wrote this one in 2018 in 2020 i know now our government already try to push to assess since 2014 actually and keep continuing until now to have uh, our online data protection and it already become bill actually so actually we really need to support this one because actually it can help uh, our community or our citizen to easily set distribute our information or data, but we can give protection. So that's why uh, I shared actually uh, from this article, they said in Indonesian uh, data protection bill, they really concerned with five things, which is data collection, data processing, data security, data breaching, and the right for individuals to have their personal data to be erased. Yeah, I really hope actually uh, how I can say as we are as community now, as several, not several, mostly all our participants today, actually as academic uh, community, we really need to be proactive. So we need to support our government to keep have this kind of a good data protection uh, regulation. Because like I said previously, we already have online cyber law, but until now, that law is still have this kind of issue. But now we're gonna have a new law, which is the online data protection. We still need to like guide, to support government to create a good law because the important about law, the important about regulation regarding about this kind of digital environment, of course, is about protection. It's about governing the situation and protection the society. I think that's it, uh, what I can share today. And we, I'm happy to discuss uh, if there is more question. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Fiona, for very interesting presentations. I, I will please the participant to ask questions, but before the participants, I would like to discuss about a, a little thing, but it's a big issue nowadays in Indonesia, Fiona. Mm. It's about, you know, hate speech on the one side and freedom of speech on the other side. So sometimes public say that this is kind of criminalization for freedom of speech, like in Jering's cases. Maybe you also follow the cases as well. Now uh, he was on the court and maybe in the next months will be, will be, you know, the court deliver the verdict for the rings. But I think this is a very big issue nowadays in Indonesia because public like on the one side, as I said, this is kind of criminalization for uh, freedom of speech. Yeah. But on the other side, we also, we also worry about, you know, this is not just, just criminalization of freedom of speech. This is hate speech as well. Mm. So what can you explain about this situation on the online digital era like like nowadays. Thank you, Fiona. Yeah. Can you please mention more about this? Yeah, thank you so much for the question. I think when we talk about online hate speech, it's like I mentioned at uh, a, a brief in my introduction, it become global phenomena. It's not only related about Indonesia, but in across this world, even though in Australia, we also have this issue about online hate speech. And one thing for sure, I know uh, during cases is also got case by ICE law again, because like I said, this law is still draconian law and actually they can affect, they can, how can I say, they give this kind of, uh, yeah, a, a side, not like negative impact for people to talk actually to share. But what I can say regarding about this kind of online, this kind of freedom of speech, we also need to consider when we talk something, 
we share something, we definitely need evidence. We also need this kind of literacy because we can't easily just blame or we can freedomly talk bad about something, but we don't have fact, we don't have evidence. This is one thing for sure. But another thing for sure in Australia, they also have this kind of, uh, how can I say, they also can have this kind of regulation to govern this issue. Uh, but the good thing in here, they don't put uh, people when you have cases related about uh, give your opinion related to go to the jail. They don't have this kind of cases because for uh, in Australia, if you uh, confirm get guilty, what you already talk and actually it's not right, you just need to pay fine. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. And I think we should go further about that kind of situation in Indonesia because actually if we just, like I said, when I did in my PhD, ITE law in that uh, PhD already, become one of my conclusion because it also affect activists to talk and now it's happening right in 2020 we got this kind of issue again so that's why we still need to how can i say go further to that regulation actually it can make fear for people to talk because if you just put people go to the jail with that kind of law actually it's still a problem in the future when we talk i think that what okay I say. okay fiona i got it okay yeah. the difference is you will not go to the jail if you do it in Australia. I think like yeah, that. Jonah. You still can get problem if you don't, if, if your what you share actually is not right, right? You still can get a case, yep. but you're going to get fine at the end. That's, uh, that's how that's can, the that's the difference. Result. Yes, that's the difference. And actually, we should go further with this one. Okay. Thank you, Fiona, for the explanation. And we have already some questions they put on the chat room. Maybe you can see as well on the chat room. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes, uh, we have some question in on the chat. First comes from Bambang. Oh, sorry, from Ahmad Adi Fitriyaki. The question is like a long time ago, I joined the uh, webinar. Speak about the design of law for private data. One of the speakers from University of Defense, I think Universitas Pertahanan, said that the importance of security interest is cyber security, and he has been focusing for the design of the law about cyber security. The problem is the design of the law about cybersecurity contrasts with the design of the law about private data. I don't really get it, the question. I think you understand the question as well. So what do you think about the, the debate? About debate on the one side, cybersecurity, on, and on, on the other side is about private data. It's quite interesting. Can you please... Mention yeah. about this, Uder, Fiona. Yeah, thank you. Yes. I think I'm gonna answer this one not as a law perspective because uh, I'm more towards to the communication or media perspective, but I can give my opinion about this one. Yes, there are, there is a big contrast between the how I can say the design law from cybersecurity, especially from the defense people. Definitely, of course, they always have this contrast with the privacy. Because when we talk about security, when we talk about this kind of defense system, they always want to secure, right? They already their value. So when they secure, sometimes they always want to protect, they always want to put boundary, they always want to, how can I say, they create regulation, actually probably sometimes it's too far, they also can make restriction. That's the problem with this kind of idea. But it's very contrast with private. When we talk about private as an individual, as a personal, we always have this kind of right, right? We also have this kind of uh, privacy. So we still have rights probably to talk, to be part, to be shared, something like that. So that's why it always contrasts. So I think what we need to do about this kind of polemic, definitely we always need to have collaboration. We need to sit together between this uh, people from cybersecurity and these people probably as from civil society, they need to sit together. That's why I keep mentioning multi-stakeholder collaboration is so important. 
because when you create when you design something nowadays you can't create something or you can't create regulation is only from your side because with this kind of online information or with this kind of digital era and online era everything can be easily connected and impacted so that's why sitting together collaborate together and see what's the advantage what is the disadvantage what's our strength and what is our weakness definitely you should sit together and we should have a common ground but that's why why I also shared another previously I shared a report about the Australian Human Rights Commission when they tried to create a report about uh, how our future, uh, how Australian online environment in the future can get impacted to the human rights. I think this is another basic value that we also can uh, consider more and also we can hold actually when we create something, do we also uh, think about uh, our human rights, because when we have this kind of regulation, we also need to consider human rights, because this is actually the very basic uh, value that we still can hold on. I think hopefully it's answer. For yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Fiona. And now we move to the second question, it's come from uh, Devi Tambunan. Mm. What is... Uh, Indonesia can take or learn from Australia about our digital environment in Indonesia. Sorry if my question a little bit out of topic and sorry for the grammar, that's all right. No, <laughs> that's okay, no problem. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, what's your problem. opinion about this, Fiona? Yeah, that's why I share several things today about Australia, right? This is something that I really want that we we can think further in Indonesia, actually. Definitely we need to have independent agency and we also need to have this kind of agency that can support probably in the future when we have online data protection regulation, who gonna manage or who gonna control or probably not control, sorry, the world should be governed. Who gonna govern that kind of issue or uh, situation with this kind of law or regulation, it should be probably from independent agency. We should go, we should push this kind of situation. And what else? Collaboration. This kind of agency always have collaboration from government, academic, civil society, professional, industry, plenty of collaboration they started because they know, like I said, what you create, why you design something. It's not only about your interests. You should think further about all these people together, this community together because it's going to be impacted each other. And last one, I really like with this type of uh, organization or agency in Australia, they always come up with research. They always have evidence-based research. And this kind of research is so important because when we create something, when we design something, if we don't have data, we don't have fact, how we actually create that, right? We don't want to create something like I said, it's only about our interests, but we should see how the fact, how the trend, how the data. So that's why they always create a robust research gradually like sometimes a good thing like uh, twice a year or once a year is already good, at least gradually. What research that you want, sorry, what data that you want? So they conduct this research to get that data. With that data, with that finding actually can help them to create a good uh, strategy, right? A good recommendation, how they can achieve. That's actually, we really need to, uh, how I can say need, need to use it. Actually, we always need to have a gradually research about uh, every data that we need to, to know if we want to implement or create some policy or regulation. Yep. Okay, yeah. This is mm. a big problem in Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next question, is it's okay for, for you to reply one by one because I think the participants maybe need to get more information from you clearly. So I will I will please the participant one by one and then you reply as well one by one. Is that okay, Fiona, for you? It's okay. Okay. The next question is from Karel Prahabata. I think it's quite similar with my question. But freedom. Before. Yes, about freedoms. The question is what definition of freedom in the context of digitalization? So 
online and offline, probably like the, the question. Mm. Is there any difference between between offline freedom of speech and online freedom of speech? I think that's the point of the question. This is still a bit, how can I say, it's a bit debate. So some people actually, when they talk about online and offline related about freedom, some people actually said it's different. But for me, it's still similar. It's still same. This is from my opinion. It's still similar. It's only the platform. It's only media. When you talk badly about someone, when you talk directly, when you talk with your uh, social media profile, or when you talk on your website or any kind of platform, it's still similar. The effect, uh, the people who got it is still similar, right? That's why. Freedom is also similar. Freedom when we talk in offline and online for me is still similar because it's kind of our expression. So basically we can't like, we cannot differentiate, but if I can see what is the consider suitable as a freedom in digitalization, don't forget should go back, should have a basic to the human rights. That's probably my point. Because when we talk about freedom of expression as a human, it's also similar offline, online, we should basic as in our human rights. I think that's it. Okay. I got it. <laughs> yes, because online and offline is quite similar. Yeah, similar. The next question is, sorry. The young generation. From, yeah, Rivaldo. Mm. Yeah. What Indonesian young generation do to use internet in any terms more safely? Yeah, this is, big issue as well in Indonesia because you know Indonesian government will will I'm not sure will be passed or not by the government but the government have a will to limit the age of uh, users of internet in Indonesia especially for social media so what what do you think related to this question Fiona mm. Yeah, I think I also can combine this question from Aldo and also Abbas when we talk about how actually young generation can use internet more safely and we still have problem with hoaxes, misinformation, online hate speech, right? So one thing for sure, definitely young generation need to have digital literacy because when we have this kind of digital literacy, it can help us because um, this kind of literacy can give us understanding how we actually can uh, participate safely, right? So that's why Mm, and I think government is already have a good, um, not only goodwill, but I think plenty of initiative because I also know uh, last year I also got some trend now uh, we from QT from when I used to work in there that actually we have some short training about digital media literacy and invited several people from Indonesian government and we got a uh, good uh, representative from uh, come info and actually it's really good because I can sense actually Indonesia already has this kind of uh, how can set like multi-stakeholder and also big scheme or big plan related about digital literacy which is cyber crazy and actually it's really good because this is something that we need to have keep promote this kind of literacy so young generation can get understand and I think in the future they also try now to have this kind of uh to be embedded in the curriculum because that one is like more workshop and also more to the event and also they always have regular event every week to keep promote to keep maintain and yeah in, i think the future they also have a goal also collaborate of course with education minister so they can have uh i can say they can have a good uh, curriculum related about digital right and Interestingly, this still issue about hoax. That's why the good thing in Indonesia, and it also happened in Australia, we always have this kind of issue. In Indonesia, when we talk about COVID, the hoax is also now probably the, I'm not sure what's the, the popular issue, probably uh, vaccine. Vaccine probably is not good for, uh, for people, right? So there's another hoax about that. In Australia, we also got some hoax related about how you can eat bleaching to cure you from COVID. We also have this kind of issue, not only in Indonesia, in Australia, same. But one thing for sure, 
how for really generate from rural people. That's why I really like some kind of civil society grassroots movement like Mafindo, because I know Mafindo Indonesia try to have this kind of fact checking. They have this kind of website. They also have many volunteers, not only in Jakarta. They also have plenty of volunteers. So I think this kind of uh, grassroots activity that we need to support. If um, how can say, especially for young people, if you really probably want to be part, definitely you can be part of the volunteer in your area, in your probably in your city, and it can be helpful. Because when you already become volunteer, you got the training, you also can transfer your knowledge, your expertise to transfer again. And once people getting, how can say, if you have plenty of volunteer, definitely you can also can have a plenty uh, target or uh, audience or market that can get more information about that one. So like Mafindo and they also have collaboration with fact checking. Since this is some like activity that need, we, we need to keep support. That's why we, as a young people, what we can do actually this good thing when I also become, uh, how I can say it, when I also become student before Indonesia, I always like to be part of this organization. I joined this for volunteer. This is actually one a good uh, idea if you want to be part. We become volunteer with this kind of good organization. We can be uh, sharing and transfer more, not only in um, in one big city, probably try to find in any uh, small city and it can be spread it. And of course, we still need to support government when they already have this kind of goodwill. Like I said, they have this kind of cyber crazy program. Actually, this is something we need to support because actually this is something uh, a good to, how can I say, to approach as many as they can. Because Indonesia, the main issue in Indonesia, we have a, a big population. Australia is only 24 million people. Why in Indonesia, we can have 20, 20, sorry, 250 million people, right? Like 10 times from Australia. So of course, if you have many population, many people, of course, it's quite hard to maintain. It's quite hard to govern, but we don't lose hope. Young people, what you can do, be part of something, do something. This is something actually probably I can share. Yes, very interesting. I agree with that. I go with that, Fiona. Hmm. Uh, I think this is the last question from the participants. Oh, there is more question. Wait, we have uh, two, 30 minutes to go because is will be finished uh, will be at 11 a.m. So 30 minutes to go, Fiona. So we have two more questions. Can you hear me? Sorry. Okay. Okay, this is from Yasmin Vijaya. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, sorry. This is from Yasmin Vijaya. Something wrong. Sorry, something wrong with my... Can you hear me, Fiona? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear, but I can't find Yasmin in my chat. But I can't find Yasmin in my chat box. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, the last one. Maybe we have two more questions. It's Yasmin from Yasmin uh, Mijaya. Yeah. And Rivaldo as well. Okay. Okay, I have still an issue, right? I said I saw you data from one research in here related about the information commission agency, right? They always have this kind of critical data every twice a year about what is the data bridging problem, sorry, data breaches problem, and which is actually the first sector is still health sector. So that's why I think it's not only Indonesia and also Australia. But the good thing in here, we already have this kind of online data regulation. Well, in Indonesia, we don't really have this. And nowadays everything, our record, our data is through online. So that's why this is something actually we need to like, uh, 
you already mentioned everything now it become digital media records that's why this situation we need really to be considered more because this kind of online data protection is so important because without this kind of regulation we can protect our data especially our health data and how i can say it. and also there is another different in indonesia in australia i think australian people or an australian system is really considered about privacy uh, transparency and which is indonesia the terms of privacy itself it also has different meaning in australia i think definitely uh, dr gede also can help me about this because you also been experienced to living in here when you talk about how i can say it, it's not easy you take somebody sorry it's not easy if you want to tag someone picture in your social media. It's not easy probably if you want to put your friends' children picture in your social media, especially for local people, right? And what else? Some people, they don't share about their birthday, their age, religion. It's not how I can say it. It's so privacy for them. So even though like the privacy degree level or meaning is different, that's why. So this is something actually we need to also, how I can say, it, learn together because in Indonesia as a collectivistic culture, for us, privacy is so blurry. So sometimes what we share in social media for us, oh, this is good. So my friend, my network, my family can know what I got, what I've been through, what, what is my activities. So sometimes, like I said, privacy is blur. But in here, privacy is so important. So they already have this kind of uh, boundary. Transparency is so important though. Everything in here, it should be transparent. While in Indonesia, we're still struggling because one of my case, actually one of my case in my PhD is about corruption movement. So that's why when we talk transparency, it seems like way back years ago, it's still a problem. I, I really, I really hope this value, this uh, uh, one of professor, the Terry Flu concept, they talk about transparency. Transparency or accountability is so important. When we're dealing with this data, we're dealing with this kind of online trans transaction, transparency is in there. So probably one thing that we can probably I can't say it, we need, to, how can I say it? For this kind of situation, it's so complex citizen. As an active citizen, we should support government. We should guide the government. We should, how can I say it, guard the government when they try to create uh, online data protection regulation. That's why we need to guide them. This regulation actually can protect us as a citizen can govern us as part of this kind of online community. This is something actually we can do. Asia, they already have this kind of regulation, so we should really have this one. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Fiona. Hope it's Sorry, answered. maybe I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. The last question, I think, is from Wildan Pranata Gama. It's about procedural. Mm. Way to go. But his concern is about blockchain challenges mm. and so about negative issues in the presidential election last year. Fusion related to technology implemented by the Indonesian government as well. So related to one another on big data. You get the question? Yeah, thank you, Wilder. I don't really get it. Yeah, thank you, Wilder, for this question. To be honest, I'm not a big expert on Bitcoin. Really know about this kind of topic. Uh, probably, if you want to share more about this one, I will be happy to uh, hear. So I probably I can give my insight about data and everything. Use this kind of algorithm to have 
how they actually can promote some certain issue. They also can push this some certain issue to become public discourse. How actually big data can be used further nowadays, not only as an analysis, not only for how I can set to see the trend in the beginning, be careful nowadays. This kind of situation with digitalization also can affect people uh, to exploit the algorithm, to exploit the content. Like we already know, right, from for election not only in Indonesia, they also got issue with this this kind of separate issue the Indonesia when actually mm, they have this how can I say they have this kind of hoax, they have this kind of hack hacking uh or they also try to implement um, Indonesia, we will have plenty, plenty of Vidanta export, but in the good way. Because like I said, if you have this kind of technology and knowledge, it could be very dangerous if you will not use it as a good thing. If you just use it for your interest, if you use it only for money, if you use only for, uh, how can I say, it? yeah, only to gain, profit it will be dangerous but we really need this kind of fit into a good uh situation i think that's that i can answer okay thank you fiona for uh, the response i think the last question from me myself fiona and as a closing statement so what you can ask for the Indonesian government regarding to internal security and also digital security in Indonesia because many Indonesians are about their privacy now in Indonesia. So what can or the regarding to the digital privacy in Indonesia in Indonesia in the future, Fiona. Okay. And second, yeah, that's, yeah, 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 that's the first question. What can you suggest for the Indonesian government? And secondly, what can you recommend for the young generations, especially for students, because the participants now join with us is mostly students, my students. So what can you suggest for young Indonesian, especially uni students in the future about, about using the internet and, and using social media future? That's a question for me myself and also maybe as a closing statement uh, from you as a guest speaker for this international public lecture, Fiona. Please, Fiona. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think when we talk about digital privacy, it's so important. One thing for sure, we really need to understand when we share something, when we use our phone, our social media, uh, we should think further that, okay, it's something that we can share. It also can be how can share uh, people gonna know our community not sorry not our community our network gonna know but we also need to consider is it also be useful for any other people i think privacy also can think about that it's not really useful you need to consider so what share it also can help us to protect us right so that's why digital privacy is so important we really need to how to maintain our privacy because this kind of social media platform or this kind of digital platform actually it create how I can say it, it create tools that make us so easily just to share something even though sometimes it's our personal information our personal data that probably people will not know or people shouldn't know that we can easily share so that's why we should think twice at least is it useful or it also can be impactful 
it also can be used for negative things, something like that. So it can help us to maintain our digital privacy. And also the second one, um, my, me, yeah, this is, I think, my suggestion again for the young generation. Yes, I think for young generation, you really have a good uh, opportunity nowadays because plenty of movement, plenty of activities actually nowadays it's been created and plenty of them actually with a good will and a good purpose. This is something actually for young generation can be part of. Because like I said before, like Mavindo, fact checking, this is something that actually can be part of that if you want to learn more. Or I also know like uh, I shared before about cyber crazy from Cominfo, it's also another good um, initiative and also good strategic plan actually to create digital literacy across all Indonesian society. And this is something actually we need to keep support. So every good activities, every have a good purpose activity related online, this is something we can be part of that. They always need the volunteer, they always need, uh, how I can say, people that keep promoted more. Because I think, like I mentioned, Indonesia is a big population. If we can share more, we promote more, it can help them to achieve their purpose, right? So all Indonesian society can get uh, knowledge, can get, uh, how I can say, the insight, and also can get literacy. So that's really important. And also, if you are from law faculty, I think we really need to consider about this kind of online data protection, ITE law. So I think in the future, media law expert is also important. And it's actually in Australia is another one of a good, how I can say, a good uh, uh, position or paid job because if you know about law, but you also can have expert about media, especially in online or digital media actually is really good because this is like new media, this kind of new media also have different, like I said, different habit, different market, different system. Actually, this is another new field that you can learn more. So of course we still have draconian law, like ITE law, like I mentioned, even though now they already got revision in 2000, I forgot in 2000, 16 or 2017, they got revision, but they still have some issue in there. So the last step, uh, law enforcement people still need to be guided, need to get a good skill for this kind of issue. Otherwise they can implement a good law related about online environment, right? And then we also gonna to be filled in, to be part of that because it will be a good, everything in the future, the transaction, what else? The negotiation, the distribution is through online. So online data protection regulator or media regulator is getting, getting popular. I think this is something for young people can learn more and also can find more. Now everything you can try to read more. Yeah, I think so much uh, for the trust, for the invitation for this uh, international conference. Thank you very much, Yona, for the presentation and also for the response. Very interesting and uh, enrichment our our information and. and education about digital literacy, especially about sensitive uh, issues and privacy in, in, in digital. Again, thank you very much for the presentation. You, Fiona, I hope you very well there in this difficult situation. <laughs> and also I would like to thank to the participants who already joined and bring a question to Fiona and also get information from Fiona. Thank you very much for all the participants, probably mostly my students, graduate and undergraduate students. And also I would like to thank to Sabine for the support of this event. As I mentioned, we hope that out regularly by the Faculty of Law maybe every three, four months, at least every semester, because it's important for us to take it with an international community. 
And again, to Fiona, thank you very much. You are yes, yes, for this international public lecture. And we hope we can meet in the future on the same event or on different uh, events. And the last one is I would like to thank you so apologize much. for yes, and also apologize to all the participants any inconvenience when because it's online like Fiona said everything mm. everything online so we, we can meet online but there's also like you know um, problems like signal and everything so us in, 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 in our condition sometimes it's not good like so I'm, I'm, I say apologize if you find any inconvenience. Again, thank you very much to Fiona and to all. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Very, very well. Yes. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Hope to see you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.